Hey everybody, I thought I'd stop in on this Thanksgiving weekend and kind of give you an insight on what we've been up to. The weather's been beautiful, so we've been doing a little bit of work on this old girl here. And there's more yet to come on that. And then I thought I'd just take you around and show you what we've been up to with the animals. Uh, the pigs, we've been, we've been giving them some, uh, some charcoal. And no, it's not the charcoal that you buy from the, from the store in a bag. We ended up making our own charcoal, and this is an interesting process. We went out to the woods and we found some oak trees, some dead limbs, and I cut them up into small chunks about this size. And then we build a big fire in there, get a nice bed of coals, we pack this pail full of full of wood pieces, and then you set it on top of the coals and you let it turn into charcoal. It takes about a couple of hours, but uh, the pigs, it's crazy. When you put it in there, uh, they go nuts for it. Let's go down there. I'll show you what they, how they do that. So why would you give a pig charcoal? Well, we'll talk about that here after I give them. All right, you little monsters. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Come on, watch out. Come here. I get them a little bit there. A little bit there. Well, I don't know if you can see in there or not. Oh yeah, there you go. They are chowing down on the charcoal. You guys like that? Huh? So a lot of people ask, why why would you feed your pigs charcoal? And I guess the easy answer is, well, it's good for them. Uh, I've done a lot of research and reading, and uh, it varies from uh, their, their GI tract health. Uh, it extracts any toxins, any bad stuff that might be in their body uh, that they might, might get from the, the dirt and rooting and all of that kind of stuff, all the way to um, maybe they're just self-conscious and they want white teeth. You guys have you seen the, the charcoal toothpaste before, right? But I doubt it. I've also heard that after they do poop it out, it's actually really good for the soil uh, in containing the minerals and nutrients that are involved with that, uh, keeping, the, keeping the nutrients in there and not letting them ev evaporate away in the form of methane and, and so on. We're going to give some to Red and Callie here also. They don't know what, what this is. I don't know that I've given them charcoal before. Hey, come on now. Yep. There, try this stuff. Callie, you don't... There's nothing left on there. No? Alright. Well, Red and Callie are getting into it as well. A couple of reasons I wanted to give Red and Callie some charcoal. Number one, I'm going to unplug the fencer and I need them to be occupied. Because I'm going to take you down over here. I just expanded the I just expanded the pasture for the cattle. And I forgot to put a fence post in. So what we had before where the little monsters are, it goes down over there to a post, comes across over to that post there, 
and then it came up and it went into the pine trees right up there. They weren't able to go in that area that they're at right now. So I'll show you how far we extend. If you remember from last year, when we did a video about pigs, we brought our pigs down this lane and then came back again to smooth it off. And I could probably, well, in my peak performance, I could probably jog down to the end and back and not roll an ankle. And before, if you'd walk down to the end and back, they, uh, it was so moundy in here with gopher mounds and all of that stuff that you could roll an ankle just walking down this lane. Some fatty. On the way back, I'll explain more on the grass. So, we had deer in this lane not too long ago. So, what I'm trying to do here, I want to get a, a fence post kind of in the middle here. There's one right over there, and then our corner right there. But with how many deer are around lately, I wanted to beef up this end just a little bit here. And this isn't the right insulator for this wire, but it works pretty good. So, that'll hold it. Now about the grass. There where it goes from long to shorter, that's where we had our meat chickens this summer. We brought the meat chickens down. We brought them down from here, this way, brought them over, and then brought them back again. And being uh, the end of November here, we st I'm sure the grass is dormant, but it's still green, and the girls are loving the green grass. In fact, a couple we uh, last week before I extended the pasture here, they uh, they got out down in the corner. A deer went through the fence, pulled it off the 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 post, and they ended up getting out. And all they did was walked up here and started grazing on this part. I'm going to show you. So from back there, I'm going to show you where where they get to sleep at night. So here is how far in we go. We got the the post and the fence, and it's so nice and peaceful and quiet. They've got a layer of needles that they get to lay in. I had kind of hoped that. Uh, it was going to stay a little bit colder, uh, just for the purpose of the ground not getting soft and then pudging into the roots and stuff like that, but um, it doesn't look too bad. So where the grass is kind of pounded down there, that's where they usually, uh, where they bed down for the night or when they're chewing their cud and stuff like that. So they get to sit there in the sun, looking over the hillside, and then when they want water, they just come in here and their water tank is right there. So I better come out this way. Pigs get curious and they're gonna figure out that the fence isn't on here pretty soon. There wasn't a lot to this video, but I just wanted to stop in, uh, let you know what we've been up to. And I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I hope you had enough food to eat and you were surrounded by friends and family. Have a good day.